This week on TGC News, Bull Armory has a new tactical gun, Taurus has a new tactical gun, FN has a new tactical gun, SIG has a freaking 10 mil, and much, much more. By now, you guys have all seen our signature blend with Blackout Coffee called Tenacity. This is a low acidity, high flavor, high caffeine. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. It's got a little extra jolt of caffeine in there. This is a great, great roast for you guys that love good coffee without all that acid. Blackout now also has stuff from GOA and FPC. This is a great option if you want to support those two different groups. Any of those blends will do you good. Anything from Blackout is good. There's a link in the description to get you a discount. They're always running sales. Check the link. Go use our code. It's going to be awesome. Check out Tenacity or the Pro Gun Blends. That's what I'm calling them. That's not what they call them. We would really appreciate it if you guys supported them because they support us and that enables us to keep making videos for you guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News, the only gun news show that covers things that you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Hello. Welcome. With GunCon just a few weeks away, yeah, it's blazing up on us, I figured I'd keep you guys in the loop until it happens. First... We are going to be live streaming the GunCon panel right here on TGC. Of course, why, why wouldn't we do that, right? It's also going to be streamed on Guns and Gadgets, Firearms Radio Network, and the We Like Shooting YouTube channels. All of those. We also have a big list of panelists and all of the brands supporting. There's been a lot of questions about, like, who's going to be there? That sort of stuff. Those are all over on guncon.net, so please go check that out. I cannot wait to see you guys there. It's going to be awesome. Stick around to the end of this week's show for a special announcement on how you could win tickets to GunCon and the VIP Range Day. Now, how about we get into some news? Let's kick things off with what I think is another exclusive. I, I believe this is. If I'm not mistaken, we are the first to bring this one to you guys. It's from Bull Armory, and it's called the TAC Light. Some of you guys might remember that not too long ago, we reviewed the TAC 5-inch, and we freaking loved it. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. I'm hoping that this is a similar gun. Let's go over the specs. At the core, it's a double stack 1911 style gun with either a 4.25 inch or five inch barrel and 18 round mags. From there, we're met with an aluminum frame as opposed to the stainless steel frame on the big boy tack. And there's also a couple of other changes. There is no optic cut on this gun, womp womp. There is no weight reduction cuts, no ambi safety, and there is also no flared magwell. So seemingly closer to, I guess, like a normal 1911 with a double stack mag. I think it's kind of ironic that the name is the TAC Light and they didn't do any weight reduction cuts, but I suspect that's more about cost than anything else. Beyond that, the finish on these is all going to be two-tone. No silver or black, just all two-tone. Silver slide, black frame. That's what you get. The sights are slightly different from the other model as well because there is no optic cut, so no need for the much taller sights. Although, thankfully, there is a ledge on the rear sight for one-handed manipulations. I, I would be upset if the TAC model didn't have something like that. And as with the other TAC, I know we're comparing that a lot, there is a distinct lack of a threaded barrel. I know Bull is watching, so guys, let's see it. Where's the threaded model? How about a 10 mil double stack with a threaded barrel? Or maybe a 50 Action Express double stack with a threaded barrel? I have a can for that. And I, I mean, I could dream, right? <laughs> anyway, I know you guys want to know how much, right? That's always the question. The MSRP on this new TAC light model is 1500 even. That's down from 1890 on the standard TAC model. Still not what I would call cheap, but if it's anything like the TAC 5 we shot, it's going to be one of the best guns I've shot in a long time. Time will tell. Moving on from there, SIG has brought out yet another surprisingly low quality, slightly out of focus product launch video for arguably one of the most exciting guns they could release this year. It's called the P320X10. And you guessed it, it's the 10 mil 320. It's finally here. So to keep this short, because we have a ton of ground to cover this week, I'll focus on the changes from 
other 320 models. First, it's got a beefed up grip module to handle the 10 mil recoil, which they say doesn't feel as large as like a normal 10 mil grip. They say it's not quite as big. It feels like a nine mil. It's got 15 round mags, comes with two. And of course, it's got an optic cut in the RMR pattern. The barrel is a five incher and otherwise it's similar to the other X series guns they've released, flat trigger, etc. For me personally, this is a bit of a must have, especially since we just reviewed the M&P 10 mil that came out a little while back. Go watch that video. I feel like we are sort of obligated to compare the two and probably the Glock 40 as well. And since SIG doesn't list prices, we're just gonna make it up again. The MSRP on the P320X10 is a thousand rounds of 224 Valkyrie. It's kind of weird that they would want ammo for an arguably dead caliber, but whatever. Moving on, we have two new ones from Taurus. We're all over the map this week, so buckle up. First is one I didn't see coming at all. I don't know why, I just didn't see this coming. It's the G3 Tactical. They are really expanding the G3 lineup faster than the GX4, oddly enough, because I thought that would be like their flagship, but no. And I'm not mad about it. Long story shorter, the G3 Tactical comes with a four and a half inch threaded barrel, 17 round mags, which is not an increase despite having the extension on the mag. And of course the Toro optic cut and raised sights to go with that. Beyond that, it's got a slide coated in Patriot Brown with a tan frame, as if you couldn't see that on the pictures. Here's where things get a little weird. This is one of the most expensive Taurus pistols I've seen. The MSRP on this tactical model is 582.98, so 583 bucks. Compare that to the base model at 340 bucks, and you've got a price increase of $243 and change. So bigger sights and OptiCut and some Cerakote, actually, that, that's, that's probably about right for all that stuff. However, that also puts this gun into a price point where Taurus is a bit unfamiliar. I suppose if you want all those features, the selection on the budget side of things is kind of limited, and as far as I know, is only bested by the IWI Masada Tactical, which we recently reviewed, go check that out, at a $480 MSRP. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this one. Sound off below, down in the comments, to let us know if you think this will be worth the cash. Also new from Taurus is the Executive Grade 856. This is another new territory for Taurus. Think of the Executive Grade lineup as a sort of performance center like Smith & Wesson has. This 856 is the first out of that line. It's chambered in 38 Special Plus P, which I think is a bit silly. Why not just 357? Like, why are we starting with that? But whatever, it's a three inch barrel and has a six round cylinder. From there, I think it's important to cover the special stuff. It's got a hand tuned trigger, rad, chamfered chambers, a bobbed hammer, which I hate, a nice walnut grip, and a polished satin finish. They also make it a point to tell you that these guns are put together in a separate location. It's a special location separate from the other 856s that you might see. On the surface, they sound fantastic. However, the only gun that I've ever seen fire a barrel downrange was a Taurus revolver. That was probably like 10 years ago now, and they've been getting their crap together, but that hasn't left my mind. I am skeptical, but open to trying them. The normal 856 guns retail for about 350 to 450-ish, depending on the model, you know, black, stainless, this grip, that grip, there's like 100 of them. These executive grade guns have an MSRP of 689 bucks. That's almost what I paid for my Smith & Wesson 686 when it was brand new. That's almost double the price of the entry-level guns. It's a lot to swallow. And I'll be honest, guys, we have both of these new Taurus guns on the way, so we'll be able to tell you if they are worth the swollen price tag. I'm curious to know. I want to know what you guys are thinking first impression-wise, but we're going to review them either way. Moving on from there, a new bolt action from Voodoo Gunworks. It's an expansion of their Sinister lineup. For those unaware, Voodoo is known for being one of the best rimfire bolt actions around, and this expands on that. It's a bit complicated, so I'll try to simplify the best I can. You can get these with either the 360 action, that's their three lug 60 degree throw, or the V22 two lug, and it comes with one of three barrels. 
Helix 6 Precision, Proof Research, or Bartline. Depending on the barrel, you can have it anywhere between 16 and a half and 22 inches in length. On top of that, it comes in a Mesa Precision Arms altitude stock with an adjustable or non-adjustable cheek rest. One's heavier than the other. There's a lot going on here, and it's bordering on a straight-up custom gun, but I guess that's kind of what Voodoo is known for. The pricing reflects that, though. The MSRP for these starts at $3,265 and goes up to $3,355. Yeah. You're getting what is a fantastic rifle, but you will pay for it. Next up this week, Walther has a new one, and I don't think anyone was expecting this. Unexpected Guns kind of seems to be the theme this week. It's called the WMP, which stands for Walther Magnum Pistol. Unfortunately for us, it's only a rimfire magnum, 22 magnum to be exact. Walther's first 22 magnum to be more exacter. The short version is that this is a four inch barrel 22 magnum, which is not threaded, which that is just a huge oversight on Walther's part, like big mistake in my opinion, of course. Then it has 15 round mags, which is half the capacity of the PMR-30. Then we've got a PPQ style grip, four way mag release, which means double sided paddles and button releases, ambi slide catch, fiber optic front sight, two rear sights in the box, which is cool, and an optic cut. The slide also has serrations front and rear and some speed holes in the nose. All in all, it seems pretty cool. The price tag for the WMP is 549 MSRP. Now. That leaves me with questions. Even though the gun looks cool and probably is pretty good, is it better than guns like the P322 and the Taurus TX22? Sure, they're only chambered in 22 long rifle, but does this offer more value than those? In the promo video, they show a hunter packing one of these out on an elk hunt and then using the gun when he's like running out of food to shoot a rabbit. I don't see how a 22 long rifle couldn't do that. So where does this thing win? I guess time will tell, I guess, sure. I don't know. Oh, hey, hey, Walther, uh, we also have a high-speed camera that captures fire rings too. They had a bunch in their promo video. Ours are cool too. Maybe I'm missing something with this gun. I don't know, the lack of a threaded barrel kind of kills the desire to take this over a threaded 22 long rifle for me. Like that's just, I gotta have that threading. Suppressors on rimfire guns all day. I don't know, maybe that'll be coming on the tactical model in the future. What do you guys think? Am I wrong about this? Maybe I'm like harping on something that doesn't really matter to most people. Moving on from there, even more new stuff. This time from FN. Oddly enough, the specs are somewhat similar to the Taurus we covered earlier. It's tan, has an optic cut, which loses the rear sight on this gun, has a four and a half inch threaded barrel and a decently textured grip. This one also has adjustable back straps. It comes with a 15 round mag and a 24 round mag, smart thinking on FN's part, and otherwise it's a 509 that you've seen before. Definitely a nice gun. Those are not crappy guns. I almost cursed, I almost did it. The MSRP though is a bit higher than the Taurus at 1,069 bucks. That thing better be amazing for that price. Like, that is a lot of money. FN also has a new rifle this week. It's called the DMR-3, and since it's an AR-15, I won't spend a lot of time on it. It has an 18-inch cold hammer forge, hybrid profile barrel with a rifle length gas system, Geisley G2S trigger, and a Surefire Pro Comp on the muzzle. There's also a Hodge Defense M-Lock handguard, and a couple of other trinkets that are sort of irrelevant anyway. I mean, it's an AR, come on. All in all, it's a nice rifle, no doubt. And for the MSRP of 2,328, that's a lot of shekels. It really should be awesome for that. And rounding us out this week is Poverty Pony Actual, Anderson Manufacturing. The brand that many associate with the term just as good has just released a second generation to their budget-minded AR-10 called the AM-10. Their bragging points for this are minimal. It has a DPMS high standard rail, which means that the pick rail on top is a bit higher than you might be used to. No idea why they chose that. There's also an enhanced flared magwell. It's comparable with AR-15 grips. Yes, that is a real promo point. And it also, 
This one's good too. Improved contouring and tolerances, AKA we made it suck less. <laughs> I'm not saying the other ones are bad, but like what, the, what? There's three models of the AM10 Gen 2, the Battle, the Ranger, and the Marksman XL. The only differences I could find between the Battle and the Ranger are that the Battle has a 16 inch barrel with an A2 style flash hider, and the Ranger has an 18 inch barrel with a two stage trigger and a Night Stalker flash hider. Otherwise, they are the same gun. The Battle has an MSRP of 950, even though it's on sale right now for like 150 off of that already. It's like just came out. It's on sale. Buy it, please. And the Ranger is 50 bucks more than that. The Marksman XL has a 20 inch barrel and a PRS light stock from Magpul and the same two stage trigger from the Ranger. That has an MSRP of 1075. All three are chambered in 308 Winchester and Honestly, I can't think of many more affordable AR-10s. That's right on par with Palmetto State Armory's entry-level guns, so I'd be curious to see them compared. Someone with way more time than me, we have so many reviews to do. Please make that happen. Radiant Weapons knows how to make good parts that provide actual value. The Ramjet for your Glock 19 Gen 3 through 5 is a match grade drop-in fluted barrel with a built-in comp. And you can turn it up to 11 by adding the Afterburner microcompensator, which has a non-thread attachment, which makes it 50 state legal. With 115 grain ammo, you could see up to 44% reduction in recoil. To learn more about these and all the other stuff they make, go to RadianWeapons.com. It's now time. It's now time for weekly Gunspiration. I don't know why, it's a radio ad. This is a segment where we pick the top three pictures sent in by you guys that would sort of inspire folks to get out and shoot or just be a part of the shooting community. We finally, I know we were behind guys, we got a ton of prizes out recently and then found out that the US Postal Service destroyed some of them. So if you didn't get yours from previous weeks, just let us know, we'll figure it out. In third this week is James Ackeson out trying to slay Darth Vader on May the 4th. I'm trying to figure out what gun that is down on the table. You can kind of see it there, but it's super hard to see. It almost looks like a Czech weapon CSV-9, maybe? Either way, super cool to see a range out there doing a special event for May the 4th. That's neat. From there, child exploitation. <laughs> James Seltzer says, my son turned 10, so what is a father to do? Build him an AR with a CMMG 22 conversion kit until he gets older or primers get cheaper. Honestly, 22 long rifle ARs are really fun for adults too. Like you gotta have one of those. And the winner this week, Ryan Nguyen, who recently took his wife out shooting for the very first time. It's so cool. It's so cool to see spouses out supporting each other and learning how to potentially defend their family. Rad. Winners, please send us an email to theguncollective at gmail.com with your info so that we can get you your prize pack. To submit your inspirational pictures, I need you to post them on Instagram or in our Gundamentalist Facebook group with the hashtag TGC Gunspiration, and maybe you could win something next week. And remember how last week I said I was going to announce how to win two VIP tickets to GunCon Range Day and the main show? I was going to announce it in this week's show. Well, it's simple. Anyone who submits an image using the hashtag TGC Gunspiration during the first two weeks of June will be entered for a pair of tickets. Remember, you got to get yourself there to the event and cover your own travel. And I know this will be last minute, but that's just how it goes. And you're basically going to get an all-access pass to both days, the range day and the thing. Also, make sure that these are new images, guys. So, like, come on. It's no fun if you repost your old stuff or, like, add a hashtag to it. Come on. Don't be lazy. New pictures for the win. And that's it. If you enjoyed this show and you want to see an ad-free version, check us out on floatplane.com. That'd be cool. After you click the like button on this video, be sure to hit the secret affiliate link down in the description. There's a whole bunch link tree. Go check it out. And it would also be a massive help for us. Don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every single week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over. But don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show. And the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.